Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, for those that have just subscribed, yeah, built this beautiful aircraft um, and now in the flying phase. I was going to go for a fly today, got out here, got out here nice and early, uh, had some spare time and the weather's a bit dodgy at the moment. The weather's, wind is calm, however there's big storms rolling through Melbourne at the moment, so given that I painted the aeroplane myself, I don't really want to fly in rain, so stay in the hangar. I thought I might do a walk around and just show you, I don't know, any hints and tips that I can uh, point out along the way. So first up, there's the weather. I'm located just here somewhere in Terelgan and um, yeah, if we get to the end of this video and it doesn't rain, it's a bit deafening in the hangar here. So the cruiser, um, we've got about eight hours on it at the moment. I'm trying to fly as much as I can. It doesn't sound like much, um, but with Christmas and everything else going on in the world, going really well, really, enjoy, really enjoying it. I'm getting about, if, for those who like the figures, it's climbing at about 1,600 feet a minute. It just climbs like anything. It's fantastic. Um, and as we walk around, I'll point out some other things. Engine's going well now, just some tweaks with the cooling we went through. I'll start at the front here. Haven't had much prep for this video, but I'll just talk as we go around. Uh, the propeller. <clears throat> so I took two inches of pitch, two, sorry, two degrees of pitch off the propeller. Just to give me a bit more RPM and unload it a bit, because it is a draggy, it's a draggy airframe. Like you can just see that compared to my Jabiru all moulded airframe. So that seems to have improved things, helped with my CHT and EGTs etc. We went through that. I don't want to go too far into the engine side of things. Cleaned up the baffles and in the front there as well. So I can't complain about the engine. I swapped over the... I was on running oil, Jabiru 3300 use mineral oil for the first five hours. Um, then I've just recently swapped it over to, I use Philips oil. Uh, getting the aircraft in and out of the hangar by myself, there's a slight, you know, for the water and that sort of thing. It's not too bad, the hardest bit's just getting it over the hump, but if you go one wheel at a time, and I use the carpet squares, um, it took me a while to work it out to get the aircraft positioned so that I can I can get each one out without moving the other one. Once again, they just sit on the carpet squares and things get pretty close to the walls, but it means I don't have to move one aircraft. I can fly whichever one I want. Took my daughter for a fly the other day, so obviously passenger flights are in the Jabiru and any cross country, still limited to 25 nautical miles in the cruiser. Speaking of cruising, so I've seen about 108 knots Straight line, flat out, but you wouldn't cruise at that, so pull it back to um, say 75% throttle, and it's around 95, uh, that's all knots. So 106, 108 knots, flat out, um, 95 knots in nil wind, straight and level. Uh, oil cooler at the front there. Back on the building side, I must have taken the cowl off. So I've done eight hours, so at least 16 times I reckon. I do about half hour flights, so I guess. Come back, take the cowl off. Now I'm at a stage where I don't necessarily need to take the cowl off every time. Um, but you get good at removing the cowl. Windscreen's holding up really good. I did do the, um, the double sided tape in here, which I reckon is fantastic, rather than getting glue and stuff everywhere. Just a 3M double sided tape. It seems to be holding up really well. Same as my. Um, uh, dash or glare shield carpet, which is double sided taped on. The paint going really well, touch wood. You know, the leading edges of the spats and all the areas you'd expect to get. Little stone chips are all holding up really good. I use the um, Johnson & Johnson baby wipes actually when I come back and the bugs, when the bugs are still fresh. Um, it's 30 degrees uh, where I am at the moment. So I've got some hot weather and it seems to bake the bugs on, but if you come back and just use those Johnson and, or the baby wipes, I think mean they've got alcohol in them, 
get onto it quick smart and um, they come off just with the one wipe. If you let them set, then obviously you, you gotta get your bait bugs on your aeroplane. Wheel spats holding up pretty good. Uh, the doors, I've got my little open and close um, deckle there. So mine's the way I've got mine set up. Uh, this side seems okay because in flight, if you push that forward, it's, it's locking for the passenger. Um, if they do freak out and grab something, they could potentially unlock the door, I, I guess, but you, know, you can't plan for every scenario. And there is the forward lock in there. This one does become a bit of a pain. You forever, um, you, you hop out the other side and this one's locked, so you've got to climb back in. Um, just got to get in the habit, I guess, of unlocking this door just so that you can get in this side to do whatever you have to do. Wing struts holding up well, which is probably a good thing. Um, these back windows, so I put the back windows in, I put some uh, butyl tape around there to seal that and that butyl tape is slowly, it's slowly oozing out of the slots. I just sharpen up a paddle pop stick or an ice cream stick and um, use it as a chisel and just gradually, it's like chewing gum, and just, just clean up the edges. The very first time I talked them all up, um, just sort of finger tight. The skin did go a bit wobbly, now it's all just sort of naturally sat down nicely as the, um, the butyl tape oozes out. Uh, fuel drain, no fuel leaks touch wood at this stage, keep my fuel level. I've got a check valve, if you go back in the videos, just a ball valve on each um, wing root, which is also my joiner, and it just stops the fuel transferring, so it seems to be working really well as well as flying coordinated. Wing tips holding up well, the um, plastic wing tips, my counterbalances all going well. The aircraft did, um, as I'm getting used to it, now it seems to be rolling very slightly to the left, so the old heavy left wing. Um, I might go along and squeeze the trailing edge and see what effect that has. I could also, you know, put a bit of sticky, a uh, little bit of rubber type trim on there. Uh, it's going left, so how's that work? This one has to go up, so a bit of trim on the bottom. Uh, but I'll report on that. Just showing the pictures, I guess, for those that are building, where my, this is what I couldn't sort of find when I was doing it, but that's where my trailing edge ends up, it's behind, uh, well, it's in the middle of the second and third rivet coming down here, if that makes sense, and also the intersection of the sunroof um, and the wing skin. The sunroof's slightly higher. That'll change just how you do your wing incidents and the wing skin sits on the, about a sixteenth, eighth of an inch off the top of the hinge there. These, um, the screws I've got here, I think they're 832nd, with a nut on the back and the cork. Um, if you get inside on the nut, they do actually spin, they've sort of freed up a bit, but I'm happy with that, just keep an eye on it. Otherwise you're just going to be forever tightening that, tightening it down and just compressing more and more and more. The, the main ones through the airframe on the sides are uh, nice and snug. The aerial modification I did has worked out well. The, uh, let's call it the dorsal fin, two rows of rivets, rubber's still holding in there nicely. Just filled that gap, I think it looks pretty good. Makes it look professional and finished off. Ended up with no gap under there. Because once again, uh, yeah, had to shorten the legs on the stab, but keeping all your edge distances. We went through that, and I got this nice and neat by making cardboard templates. But that involved removing the tailplane several times. Um, fit the tailplane without the fin, make a cardboard template, pull it all apart, fit the fin without the tailplane, put the cardboard template back on, and 
you get a nice result. Elevator, very sensitive, very sensitive on the elevator. Um, you do have to clean up this particular angle here, depending on where your tailplane sits, obviously to the to the hinge line. And I did have one little tiny. Uh, and we focus little tiny contact point if you like just right there on when uh, the wind had blow it or something like that so a little round file just cleaned that up and took a bit of took a bit of radius off this back edge here it's the only sort of rubbing I've found at this stage cable tensions holding up well rudder stops we went through the um, went through the rudder challenge anyone to um, get 20 degrees without the modification at the front which involved the black block and also allowing the eye ends to come into the, in through the firewall so I know I've got the full 20 degrees of rudder elevator trim I set this up for this video or before I was looking at it um, I think I fly with about that much um, down trim so tab up so for those who don't understand, the tab up pushes that down, which is, becomes down trim. Make sure you set yours, yours up in the right orientation. But I generally, I think I'm flying. I was going to adjust the, uh, the rod length on the trim tab. I may still do that, although I haven't got a lot to play with. Um, I'll check if I've got some leftover rod. Um, just a job for a rainy day just to get my LEDs in the cockpit I'm always flying from neutral to full down in that range and I very rarely go into the up elevator range even on full flap landing when I trim it back um, I'm only coming back to sort of neutral on the indicator so I could just just have to rig um, basically set this up so it, it, that position there is neutral on the indicator the trim is very powerful, um, just one little blip and that'll change, obviously change the trim of the aircraft. It's a bit dubious about the, th the four AN3 bolts holding the whole um, tailplane on or the stab, um, but they seem to be going pretty well. The designer seemed to know what he was, he was doing. Rudder's all good in the heat as well. Um, this was covered by other people. Sitting out in the sun, just make sure you've got plenty of gap because um, this, this gap here does grow the skin and the, what is it, ABS plastic tip. And you just want to make sure they don't clang together when it's out in the sun. You do get a lot of creaking, moaning and groaning, or I do. Um, just that sticky, plasticky sort of releasing sound. Um, yeah, if you went from, from shade out into the sun for a metal aeroplane, it does moan and groan quite a fair bit. Um, all that sticky sort of, I open the door, you might be able to hear it. Just all, all that new sort of sound, I guess, and... Uh, whether it's the plastic just moving slightly on the on the paint, but there's a lot of creaking, moaning, and groaning, a bit like myself. Windscreen's good. What else can I show you? Doors are working out well. You get used to banging your head on the door. You know they're there, but you just bang your head on the door. Yeah, let you know the hinges are working. This side of the aircraft's no problems at all. Inside the aircraft. Seats holding up well, still got the new car smell. Header tank going well. Up at the back, I couldn't see without the torch here, but my long return valve to a T, which drops down to the header tank. From the header tank, this my vent line goes back up. The um, wing route, a lot of people talk about the wing route connections 
and then the crossfeed manifold across the top to my other non-return valve wires there for I run an earth all the way back to my earth bus for my fuel senders as well as power. Uh, I've got a nav light, spare nav light connection there, pedo and static tubes. And the same on the other side. Oh sorry, without the pedo static. Just the wires for the fuel senders. Uh, the fuel senders that I've been using, the VDO fuel senders. Um, obviously that's not the sender, that's the cap. But haven't had too much of an issue, they're good on the ground at the moment um, and I've just got them mounted exactly as per the plan in the side there, no leaks, touch wood. And my simple, simple dashboard, all going well. Um, iPad, still getting used to the digital readouts I guess, because they're so accurate they fluctuate a lot more than what you think you see on a analog gauge um, and I love the nice simple no fuss so the four switches up levers in off you go my um, fuel shut off down the floor there it's in a console this does you do get a bit of uh, bit of movement on the back of this console in flight could probably do with an L angle down the back. Rudder pedals are working fine. Brakes, haven't had a problem with the brakes once they're bled correctly. Just bleed them from the bottom up. Oh, and you may be able to see my the gear shift boots down there that I put on the um, rudder. Nose wheel steering push rods running through the firewall, which worked well, freed everything up. Carpets and mats, everything's holding up well. Checklist, I haven't got too many pockets in here, but my checklist just sits there. And I might do a... I'll put my headset, the Bose headset on the on the chair. It's probably not much good for it. It's keeping it stretched a bit. I might make a hook. Just put a hook up here for the headsets. Alright guys, quick walk around there. Um, hope that helps someone else out. If you've got any questions, Comment below or uh, let me know and I'll take some photos, send you a video, whatever, whatever it takes. The rain's just starting to come now, so probably no flying today. I might mount up, play around, I'll mount up some GoPros, take you guys flying, we'll get some figures. Um, gives me something to do in my 25 hour flying probation period if you like. We'll get that done. I've got a guy coming to hopefully fix my hangar doors at some stage, just make that a bit more enjoyable to open the doors because they've dropped down up the top there. Um, if you have a look up there at that cross member, you may be able to see that's all bent. So hopefully get the doors fixed. Um, might do some more flying, like on the video in the Jabiru. We'll go somewhere and film a strip. Also looking at new projects. Um, going a bit stir crazy out here at the moment. There's only so much tidying up I can do. So what have I been looking at? Um, Sonics comes to mind, that company, um, ultralights, and really keen on aerodrome aeroplanes, so something along those lines. But you have to keep watching to find out what we do next. Thanks for watching, enjoy your flying, see you later.